for a politician and you can't stand for your people that voted for you and because you don't want to die step aside because that's what the job entails any politician that is not behaving like Simfubara, who will resist and protest when his rights are trampled upon knowing that our judicial system knowing that our electoral system have failed us that any politician who will not stand his ground no matter the risk to his person i said i will not speak for that politician again and i maintain it and you can see what is happening because we can't go forward we calm down if simfubara has been saying calm down calm down do you know where river state would have been he said he's ready for them he's fully prepared the election must go on the election must hold winners must be declared they will be sworn in and whatever is going to happen let it happen i am looking for leaders who would say nobody will rig my election and if you rig my election i will fight nigerians come out and fight if they kill anybody let them kill all of us oh yes and thank god i'm seeing it happen what fubara did was he advocating for violence was he advocating that the law should be broken no he was advocating for his right that's my opinion that's my advocacy we must advocate for our right and stand by it i did not disqualify anybody i don't have that right i said i am not going to speak for anybody going forward except this person meets this criteria in any case we have finished 2023 election it's over 2027 election has not come so anybody who is saying betrayer betrayer what am i betraying there is nothing on ground when i was a spokesman in 2023 i did my job creditably well and we convinced nigerians on what we believe is right but you can see that in nigeria you not only have to have the power to win election you have to have the power to defend your election so anybody that does not have that spirit or power to defend the votes in a manner that you would say whatever happens to me as a person let it happen i am not willing to speak any further for the person so what i just simply said is that going forward i will no longer be part of this until these fears are addressed so i did not disqualify anybody one i don't have that power then two i am not betraying anybody because i'm still a member of labor party and you can see i'm still fighting the labor party should be consolidated because nigerians are looking for an alternative to these people but if you want to fight these people who are compulsive thieves and who are the worst amongst us leading us according to sedeton dume who is part of them then you have to grow higher and be more aggressive than calm down that's what i said and i stand by it in all honesty i would have said we don't but because I'm a student of theology. I would not say so. Because when Elijah thought he was the only person that was worshipping God, God said, no. You're not the only person. There are more than 7,000 persons like you still in that country that have not done anything evil. I know them. So, the only thing we have to do in this country we must not be sentimentally attached to anybody any politician we must not be loyal to political parties or politicians we have to be loyal to the country and to the law and if any law is if any law is unjust we have to fight the law if anybody is doing anything illegal no matter who the person is we have to fight the person so in nigeria we must create the environment so that those 7,000 that we do not know who are leaders will be able to begin to emerge. If the good ones keep quiet, they will never emerge. When people say people are selling their votes, you know why they are selling their votes? Because they believe that even if they vote their conscience, it will not count. Not because they want to be corrupt. They saw what happened in 2023. I was an active participant in that election of 2023. They did not sell their votes. 
But after, it did not count. So they'll be like, why would I go and say I'm voting for my conscience? When it will not count. If I'm going to take this money, at least it will be what I gain. So if we don't fight, we are making the people that want to do the right thing to even lose confidence. That is why we must have to rise up to defend democracy. We must make sure that our votes count and are counted in every election. Otherwise, people will not see the reason to vote their conscience. Because even if they vote their conscience, it will not count. It is the poverty, the hunger and hardship that are contributing to tempt them to be corrupt. I want to tell you, it's not every Nigerian that is corrupt. It's not every judge. It's not every civil servant that is corrupt. But we must fight so that those people will have the courage to arise. I cannot ever remember myself being corrupt in anything. I do my best. I say the truth. And I will leave the rest to God. Does that mean I'm ascribing perfection to myself? Then that means I am not honest. I am not even a good man. There is only one that is good. And that's God. The only thing I know is that I'm an honest man. And we must fight to save our country. We are now at the edge of a precipice. And every Nigerian should not keep quiet. We must fight for our country. We don't have any other country. What Alex Oti did was purely legal by the constitution of the Labour Party. Article 13, 2A talked about the composition of the NEC, the National Executive Council of Labour Party. And the governor, elected governor and the deputy, III, is a member of the NEC. And the presidents and general secretaries of the labor unions marking, manning the labor centers are members of the NEC. The women, chair, the chairman of the women commissions of the labor centers, they are members of NEC, statutory members. So immediately I NEC not even Labour Party, rejected Aburi, and rightly too, for not conducting any convention known to law. The only set of people remaining as members of NEC are the statutory members, which include Dr. Alex Oti and his deputy, the presidents of NLC and TUC, and their general secretaries, and the chairman of the women commissions of Labour Party. By the constitution which Abure gave to me when I came to Labour Party. It was not Labour Party that declared Abure's seat vacant. It was INEC. And he was disgraced out of INEC. And Labour Party has always insisted that there will be a party of rule of law. Because Article 8C is very clear. That the aim and objective of the Labour Party is to create a new Nigerian personality that is atrocious, that is patriotic, and that is committed to rule of law and due process in all spheres of our national life. And so that's why we are fighting. And I will continue to fight that the writing should be done. Abure did not conduct any convention. Can you imagine? I said I was not even aware that a convention was going on. And do you know what? They, they missed the point. At least INEC has a bragging right now that it is more honest that than some group of people in Nigeria. INEC can now claim that at least it is more honest than the Abure-led, expired Abure-led NWC of Labour Party. They did not give any notice known to law to INEC. First of all, they say they gave a notice by December for a convention that will hold by March. The question is, which notice? They say they gave a notice to INEC about a purported convention that will hold in Omaha here. 
in a different date. Please, did Abure and his cohorts hold any convention in Umuahia? Good. Does that not invalidate it? They said they gave another notice for one convention that we hold in Edo. Please, did that, was there any convention held in Edo? Edo? The only notice they are saying they gave to INEC for a purported convention held in Nehu was six days to the time. That was when INEC received it. Please tell me any law that says you will give notice to INEC for six days to hold any convention. And the law is clear by section 82.5 that any convention without such valid notice is invalid. That's the law. Apart from that, it's an insult to INEC that you're giving INEC five notices for a convention and all of them are speaking of different things. Do you know the danger in that? If INEC accepts it, there are about 18 political parties. If each party will be giving INEC five notices for a convention and they're accepting it as normal, they would have about 90 notices to treat. And then six those to the time. Let us assume you told INEC you're going to have your convention in Sokoto. And they mobilized everything waiting for you to have it in Sokoto. Okay, let me even give you an example. If you said you're going to have your convention in Abuja. And they mobilized their people. With the cost of food and they can just trek from their office to Abuja. And they have done everything like that. Not allocating money for flight. Not allocating money. Then a day to the time. Because once you accept, you will accept for six days, which the law does not permit. That means somebody can come a day to the time. So a day to the time, you come to INEC and say, no, you've changed your notice. It is not going to be in Sokoto. And it might, not, it might be in a town close to Niger Republic where they will need to mobilize their people in terms of flight, in terms of accommodation, in terms of everything. If you allow INEC to allow the illegality that Abure and his colleagues perpetrated to stand, then INEC has opened itself to such illegality that 18 other parties will be exploiting it and they will cite that one as precedent. INEC did the right thing by making it clear that Abure did not organize any convention known to law. But here is another thing. Convention is for the members of Labour Party. It's not for INEC. Can Abure and his colleagues tell the world where any one notice was given to the members of Labour Party that there is a convention? One notice. Because the law is clear in section 82, subsection 3 of the Electoral Act that the executive of the party must be elected by the members of the party or their elected delegates. And then he did not even give notice at all to members of the Labour Party. At all. No media house announced it. So it's not even INEC. INEC's own is to come and monitor. But the people that ought to be the ones to conduct convention, to vote in the convention, are the members of the party or the elected delegates. Nothing like that happened. So are you trying to say that a president will now be created in Nigeria where people will not involve the members of a political party and they will come out and announce themselves that they are leaders of that party and you say it will be allowed to stand. That's another madness. Abure had an agreement with all the stakeholders that he was going to organize an all-inclusive convention. He did not do it. The law says that he should step aside because his regime is over. The members of the Labour Party did not vote. Will it surprise you to note that the Labour Party does not have any executive at any level? Not at what level? Not at local government level? Not at state level? Not at the national level? And somebody is claiming to be the national chairman and he has been there for years. If you're a member of that party, if you're supporting such a person, are you not insane? Whoever is supporting Abure and his cohorts, that person is insane. 
Governor Fubara Psychiatric Hospital should be recommended for that person. No, how can you come and you're supporting an executive that did not even say you're a human being, that did not even invite you? Have you ever seen a national convention where none of the posts, none was contested? For? None. In the so-called convention, no position was contested for. Can you imagine the national